Arsenal Fan TV, Mo, 1-1. What do you make of it? Um, Result-wise, content is what we had to do and we've come here and we've, we've done it. Performance-wise, really, really not happy. The first 45 minutes, we were so poor that we made this lot look like Man City. That's how poor we were. <laughs> They'll be thrilled the way we made them look. They beat Man City, by the way. I know they did. So did we. <laughs> so did like a lot of teams this no, they, year. They hammered Man City. Yeah, so did a lot of teams this mm. year. But ultimately, we all look, even they know. Even mm. Man United fans that are secretly watching this know that Man City are superior to them. They know they're the biggest team in Manchester. And we made them look you like the biggest... Listen, we got to get out of this place. <laughs> <laughs> we made them look like the biggest team in Manchester today. Mm. But then, luckily, in the last 20 minutes, when we finally made the substitutions that we should have made earlier, in my opinion, we finally started to change the course of the game. And the substitutions were so, so kind of... It, you know, it didn't take a, anal a football analyst to kind of see what it did to the game. Before, when we had Ramsey on the wing, it, it was constant cutting inside and there was absolutely no width. As soon as Theo came on, it's not that Theo did anything kind of spectacular, but I've always said when Theo plays, the opposition team defends in a completely different way. Yeah. You get so much more space in the middle, you get so much more space because the defence has to drop deeper. Not only that, but the back four has to kind of set up a bit wider because he does hug the touchline a little bit. And then you saw Wilshire enjoy a lot more success in the middle than the midfielders were previously. And even Aaron Ramsey looked a different player in the middle. And again, Aaron Ramsey, the last few games, he hasn't done very well out on the right-hand side, but he's not qualified to do the job. He's not a right winger. There was one occasion in the game where he took the ball up the right-hand side and it would have been a counter-attack had it been a right winger. And Aaron Ramsey has to turn back on himself. He hasn't got the pace. Mm. And, you know, people moan and they groan and they give him a bit of stick, which I didn't hear too much of today, thank God, but it's just not his job. You know, I feel sorry for the bloke doing it. And I know that we went on a great run of, like, what, 10 games un unbeaten, but it worked then. And now it has, I hate, I hate to quote Claude, but that system has gone a little bit stale and we need to freshen it up. Mm. And another question you're going to ask would, would, me. Would you start him in a cup final? No. It has to be Theo for mm. me. It has to be Theo in the cup final. You have to play to your strengths. Look, we're, su we're a superior team to Aston Villa. We're a superior team to Man United. We don't need to play a containing system. Hey, hey, hey. Who? <laughs> you're just a crap Man City. And um, anyway... So for me, I absolutely, I, I want to see Theo be playing um, right wing. And I think Jack, when he's kind of uh, made these substitute appearances in the last few games, has done brilliantly well. Mm. So I'd like to see him on as well. I actually thought the wrong substitutions were made today. I thought it should have been Aaron Ramsey and Meza Ozil coming off because Meza Ozil was not getting stuck in in these games. And I realise that he's not that sort of player that needs to. But ultimately, when you're chasing a game, it, the ask is on everyone. You might not be a ball winner, but the ask becomes on every single player. You're going to have to step up the physicality and wrestle your way back into this game. You have to earn these points. You're not going to get them gifted to you. And... Um, Look, ultimately, we, we made the substitutions, and when we made them substitutions, for me, it was absolutely 100% clear there's going to be a goal in this game, and it was just a toss-up, who's it going to go to? Luckily, it went to us, with a huge stroke of luck. But, you know, ultimately, it's all that matters. Could, could we have won it? I mean, Giroud had a couple of chances, a bit more composure. It's Giroud's chance in the first half, mm -hmm. when, when we watch this back, because I caught a replay of it on my phone at half-time, it was a shocking, shocking miss. It, all he has to do is knock the ball a yard in front of him and lash it. And a, a, a touch that should only move the ball a yard, he's moved it forward about eight yards and it's just gone off the pitch. Mm. Shocking miss. So, yeah, I, you know, I think, look, we are superior to them. I wanted to win the game when we came back uh, to one all and we should have won them. And the United fans laughing there when you I, said I that. I don't know what they're laughing at. <laughs> I, honestly, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to be antagonistic. I don't know what they're laughing at. We are superior to them. Look at the league table. Mm. Ultimately, this year, they have enjoyed an incredible amount of luck. I'll accept the fact that they had a good run where they went on three games where kind of, I think it was Tottenham. Well, you know, mm. anyone can beat Tottenham. But um, Tottenham, City and Liverpool or whatever mm. it was. And they did very, very well against them. And in that period, I put my hands up and I said, you know what? Fair play, you've done well. And that's what saves them finishing the side of the top four. But they're, they're an inferior team to us, quite simply. Mm. That's it. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Right, next year, Lumen, we want to definitely be superior to them. We want to win this thing for a change, right? Now, what do we need? What do we need to do? I mean, we saw the video during the week that you did and you were saying, you was quoting players like Benzema and stuff like that. Well, Just no, give, I... me, give, give me one player that you think 
could come in? Now, I know we probably need a couple, but give me one player that you think could come in and make, could make a big difference to this Arsenal team. Because as a team, it's a good team at the moment, but it does need a couple more ingredients. It does, look. And it's kind of like an off-field one, but it's Peter Cech. You know, that's the one that I really want. I, I know it's not very realistic, purely because of the fact that if Chelsea didn't even give us Demba Bar on... Who? What is this they keep on saying? Who is that team? I don't know. City's, no, City noisy, City's noisy neighbours, I think. But anyway, Peter Cech. And I don't think it's very realistic because they didn't give us Demba Bar on loan, so I doubt they're going to give us Peter Cech permanently. But I think he's the sort of keeper that actually saves you, look, you know, six to ten points a season. Or wins you six to ten points a season. The, uh, a bit like De Gea for them, isn't it? But, you know, he's, yeah, you know, he's, listen, he's, and, and, he's saved them so many points this I'm, season. I'm glad you brought Massive De Gea player. up. I'm glad you brought him up because I've been very critical of De Gea, not because I think he's a bad keeper, but just to address the balance of these ridiculously De Gea fanboy positive United fans. Because shots that go straight at him and he saves, they go crazy about just as much as they do when he actually pulls off a good save. You know, and I'll reference one game, Man U Liverpool. All game, bog standard saves, nothing special, and they're raving about him. Then he pulls off that amazing save against Balotelli. That's the way you should be saying, well done, that's a world-class save. But anything he does is world-class. They go he crazy has been, for him. He has been decent. He has been, he has been decent. And I'm saying that, I'm admitting that right now. He has been a good goalkeeper this year, but you need to kind of just be a little bit sensible about when you're going to go crazy over him and only do that when he does something great. But the fact that he's off to Madrid shows that he's done something right this year. Because, you know, otherwise it wouldn't be, in, it wouldn't be in for him. So, you know, Victor Valdez next year and plenty more deflections, hopefully. I'm looking over my shoulder to see if I can get out of it. <laughs> Look, United fans, they're, you know, they're a decent bunch. They're, they're not going to be that upset with the truth, right? <laughs> forward, because listen, if we lost today, we still could have won our two games. It is a massive step forward because we have ended up fourth. We are not going to play a qualifier. That means our players don't have to come back early. After the FA Cup, people like Alexis are going to the Copa America. So, I thought, you don't know who you could get. You could get some... Listen, we, were, we, were, we, we could have got Atletico Madrid before in a qualifier. 14 points. Behind Manchester yeah, United. But how many points are Manchester City behind them? Yeah, what are Manchester City going to win? They spent 180 million, mate. Yeah, what are Manchester City going to win? They didn't spend much money this year. That's, that's, that's no. not the point. Go on, go on. Go on, I'm listening. 